Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Gully's Tactical Analysis. Um, yes, I am back for one more, despite uh, Gary O'Neill's uh, comprehensive review of the Bournemouth victory on Monday Night Football. There are a couple of things that I obviously didn't go into detail on that I wanted to put, uh, pick up on as well. But I just wanted to touch on straight away that um, it was a really impressive kind of showing from O'Neill on Monday Night Football with Jem Carragher. Uh, it's kind of going into real detail about his upbringing as a player, what made him move into coaching as well. I think I, I always thought, given that he was that kind of not the most physically gifted or almost athletic player, um, you know, a midfielder who's played at the top level for a long time, had to rely on his intelligence to, to really forge a career at the top level. I always thought that that was a, a big factor in him having success within within coaching. Um, and I think you talked about that. He, he obviously went into incredible detail, sharing training clips about how we were able to open up the Bournemouth midfield um, in a number of ways to get into to good attacking positions as well. Um, and I think really just the, the takeout from it all is just that there's a feeling that this guy is, he's intelligent, he's well-prepared, he's he, he's got a lot of um, qualities in terms of the way he sees the game that are beneficial to our team at the moment, uh, which we're seeing it with results now. Um, obviously, it, it wasn't necessarily the, the the ideal start, but we didn't have the ideal preseason at all either. Um, but I think the fruits of the labour are starting to bear out. Um, he obviously has a better quality team to work with now. He's he's at Wolves instead of being at Bournemouth, and perhaps reaping some of the rewards of that as well. But I think that you know the skill in coaching is always being able to I mean I, I I always like to think oh, I kind of do the easy stuff in terms of in hindsight picking out stuff that might not have been immediately apparent um from first viewing you know obviously go back and watch games a second time around but when you spot thing, things within a team that are potentially exploitable the skill is then devising a plan to take advantage of them. and I think that's the the kind of real genius that that only you'll share genius being obviously a very strong word and he's far from being at that level of coaching and and perhaps this was you know the kind of thing that goes on every day at, at premier league clubs with the kind of intelligence of player that you're working with the quality of player that you're working with um but i think it just goes to show that coaching is so much more than what we're seeing you know um, and and the, the level of insight that was provided was really really um yeah, we were lucky to kind of be yeah, it was our manager that we were able to to kind of hear from on that front and as a pr exercise i think it's done in wonders obviously the the, the positive reaction from the fan base um um speaks for itself and you know I, I think obviously combined with the results um it's it's something you know he's, he's clearly building a, a hell of a lot more credit in the bank with with the wolves fans but i won't go into depth uh obviously on any of the things that that, that gary touched on but couple of decisions that that happened within the game that really made sure that we came out on top i think uh first thing i wanted to touch on was the fact that coming out of half time we'd obviously made the, the sub with tommy Doyle coming on for for joao gomez but also there was a slight tweak um with the shape of our front line uh, which i think was really really important in allowing us to take advantage of obviously first the, the goal initially um put us uh, back on level terms in the game but if i just kind of go to my tactics board here it's set up with with the team as it started um now mateus can we know isn't necessarily the the kind of number nine that that maybe we'd all like to have at walls you know a prolific goal scorer someone who um you know is really kind of a threat around the the, the penalty area and in the box but what he, he tends to do in terms of his profile is drop in and, and, and help out in the field. And Gary has spoken a hell of a lot about how good he's been at his work out of possession um, and his ability to combine with his teammates and, and help us get the ball up the pitch. Um, what happened in the second half of this game, having had Cunha through the middle um, for the first half, was that Cunha kind of came out uh, to the left-hand side, ostensibly. Um, and we created a little bit more of a spear, spearhead. So we kind of inverted the way our attack is set up without having that central player dropping deep. Naturally, Huang is much more inclined to, to really um, try and run in behind and, and be the spearhead of an attack. And when you push up uh, wing backs, you kind of create this 
almost like a box midfield. And I, I, I touched on it kind of in, in the title of this video, but Neto playing a little bit narrow, narrower, being able to get involved a little bit more closer to goal. I think obviously you, you, you see that kind of bear out in the, in the goal that we score uh, to equalise as well. So I'll just kind of highlight that in a couple of uh, images here. You see straight away that this is within the first minute of the second half. Kunyu's come out to the left-hand side with, with Huang up against the centre halves and Neto on the far side. Um, this image is, is from when Tommy Doyle picks up the ball. I'll, I'll get onto Doyle as well in a minute and what impact he had. But the thing that I think really uh, is, is, is pertinent here is that Huang is looking to make a run in behind immediately. Kunya is calling for the ball. And I think it was, it was interesting to me that Gary O'Neill spoke about Kunya in the interview yesterday in the way that he always want, he wants as many touches of the ball as possible. And he's that kind of guy who thinks, you know what, with the ball at my feet, I can impact the game as much as possible. So get me on the ball as, as, as often as he can. But um, obviously, he's not necessarily the ideal passing option here. Um, and, and, and the way we play um, in the situation is reflective of the training and the work that they did in the build-up to the game. Um, but again, that that run from Huang, forcing the, the back line deeper as we move it on. Neto obviously picks up the ball. He's continuing to try and drive into the box. And that creates a little avenue for Kunyu to then join in as that second line of wave, wave of attack. He plays a little pass in and obviously it's a really lovely finish. And I just think, you know what, little little tweaks like that can make all the difference. And obviously it did. Um, we, we, we benefited naturally from the red card and the rest of the game kind of was dictated a little bit by, by, by that situation. But Doyle, you know, as everyone has, 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 has uh, come to the conclusion of, was, was a real influence in this game. We don't have enough quality in possession in our midfield at the moment. Um, with Joao Gomez and Mario Lamina, they're, they're kind of combative players. I, I always make the point that we're better at getting the ball back than we are at keeping it. Uh, Tommy Doyle kind of flips that on its head a little bit with his abilities. He's tenacious, not the most athletic, but his ability on the ball really um, was was a difference maker in this game. You saw lots and lots of these passes breaking the lines. This again is is, is evidence in the the amount of players that he's taken out the game from Bournemouth with that line breaking pass straight into Neto's feet for the first goal. Um, this is another situation here where he plays the ball into Neto, taking another five players out of the game for Bournemouth. And there are kind of countless instances of, of this happening throughout. Um, and I think it's, it's really interesting to, to, to you know, show him up against Gomez and Lamina and the, the kind of style of player they are. Not that these this makes him a better player or, or anything like that, but just kind of different qualities that he brings to the team. Um, Gomez and Lamina, not, I mean... There's there's obviously a big caveat that Doyle played um, 45 minutes uh, against a team with 10 men, so isn't that his, his number of touches obviously dramatically increases because of that. But the fact that he was getting on the ball as often as possible shows that he's he's that extra level of quality, I think, in possession as well. Um, number of passes attempted way out ahead of uh, Gomez Lamina, who are these are kind of per 90 numbers that I'm showing for them over the course of this season. Progressive passes, I think that's the key bit um, in terms of Gomez and Lamina a little bit safe in their passing, um, kind of side to side, you know, look to keep possession. And when they're in the team, I think it's usually our ability to carry the ball at the pitch that gets us into attacking situations rather than their ability to pass the ball into, dis into, into dangerous situations. But um, as we showed, we've got a few options now. And, um, you know, it, it's nice to see players coming on and having an impact. Obviously, Sasha Kalajic, um scoring the winner off the bench again. Um, there's a bit of variety there. I know Gary O'Neill's spoken about us lacking a little bit of depth um, in, in certain areas of the pitch, especially wide. Um, but there is a variety in, in other areas that I think we've lacked um, for a while. You know, we, we think about the era of Dendonk and Neves Moutinho as being our only central midfield options. Um, that was quite limited in, in, in top class in many ways, but also limited uh, to a certain extent as well. There are only a certain number of ways you could play with those guys in the team. Um, last thing I just wanted to touch on was getting Pedro Neto involved in more central areas of the, areas of the pitch. Um, he has been a very much a counter-attacking threat uh, up until this point this season. This was obviously a game where we needed him to get uh, involved a little bit more um, against the deeper block, against the team that was obviously sitting sitting um, on the edge of their penalty area to kind of combat the fact that they'd gone down to 10 men. But you can see either side of the Bournemouth uh, touch map here, 
Man City, very much close to the touchline, lots of touches. Uh, Villa again, you know, much more right-sided bias. But against Bournemouth, he's obviously, you know, taken on that responsibility of being the main man. Um, I think Neto and Adama Traore have almost always been the two guys in terms of in terms of the way they carried us up the pitch. You know, the COVID season, I think back, you know, they played a lot of minutes together. The difference between the two of them is that Adar Traore seems to have kind of been bestowed these gifts of of incredible ball carrying ability without the personality to necessarily carry that and take, you know, the mantle of being the main man in a team. Whereas Neto absolutely wants to be, you know, front and centre, responsibility, and really make sure that everybody understands when he's playing that he is the best player on that pitch and um, he's really making an impact. And I think we're really starting to see that personality trait, you know, show a lot of benefits to the team at the moment. Um, again, with another assist, he was involved plenty, um, uh, had a good chance to score uh, a second goal as well. Um, but, you know, just going on to show that when it comes to these games against teams like Bournemouth, and we'll see this as our fixture this eases up, he is going to be a massive difference maker for us. And he is that level above some of the opposition players that, that we're going to be coming up against. So, you know, really kind of exciting week for us as Wolves fans. Obviously, probably, I would say, as a, as a whole, maybe the best performance aside from the Man United game that we've had under Gary O'Neill um, this season. A game in which, even being 1-0 down at half-time, I think we still had the better of in terms of the way we played. Um, and, you know, a real big step in the right direction in terms of building that positive atmosphere, that buy-in from the, from the, um, the players with the manager. And hopefully, um, as we enter a run of, of some kind of fixtures, obviously Newcastle at home isn't going to be easy at all, but um, a, a continuation of that good form that we've managed to build up so far this season. So looking forward to the next run of games for sure.